You know, I can assure you that this isn't the first time you've heard this, nor will it be the last time you hear it, but I'm still gonna say it anyways. Grown Ups is a waste of time. Now, does that statement shock you considering this film came from the minds of treasured visionaries like Adam Sandler and Dennis Dugan, the geniuses who brought us such classics like I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, Just Go With It, and Jack and Jill? And if my sarcasm wasn't a testament enough to how much all those suck, those names should do enough. And it's a shame of how true that is because Adam Sandler is someone whom I know is talented and can be funny. Sometimes his comedy shines with movies like Happy Gilmore, Wedding Singer, or Hotel Transylvania, and he's proved he can be diverse in dramatic roles like Punch Drunk Love, The Myra Oates Stories, and Uncut Gems. But in the last decade or so, his reputation has deteriorated by a lot, with movies that seem less of being movies and more so him getting his friends from SNL together and going on vacation and having the camera following you around hoping to find a story or structure. And nowhere does that speak louder than a film like Grown Ups. But before I get into anything deeper, I'll give you the gist. The movie stars Adam Sandler, Kevin James, Chris Rock, David Spade, and Rob Schneider. It follows a group of friends who reunite with each other for their old basketball coach's funeral 30 years later after their big win. And honestly, that's about as basic as the plot gets. Not to say there's nothing you can do with that, but in all seriousness, whatever they do try to tackle seems like nothing. More specifically, it's the cast going through the whole process of mourning. But when the 45 minute mark hits, the film suddenly stops carrying what little plot there was. Not that you can't have that in a movie, but the movie lacks so much substance and feels like nothing is being accomplished nor delved into. Take for example, The Big Chill a movie that is eerily similar with its premise, only this time it's old college friends reuniting in their 30s after one of their friends committed suicide, whilst also having conversations with each other as they stay in the same house. But in that movie, there was some sort of sad underlying tone that life has moved so quickly for them that they barely remember how great it was to be so young and full of opportunities. Which sounds like a grim topic that I don't expect a typical Sandler flick to tackle, but instead the movie likes to take long breaks and settle down and relax without having any movement of plot or character development. You may think I'm expecting too much from a simple Sandler-esque movie, but I'm just begging for something to drive this movie plot. Everything just feels so dry and inconsequential that it makes the movie seem longer than its hour and a half running time. In fact, everything was going so slow that I took more breaks here than I did during The Irishman, a movie that is three and a half hours long. And you might be thinking, even if the movie is dreadfully slow, are the characters at least engaging? Does ketchup belong on rice? Absolutely not! You have all these talented comedians and actors in this flick, and they're delivering the absolute lowest they can offer. Adam Sandler seems so insecure of himself that he wrote him out to be some sort of a Mary Sue that can do no wrong, like he's the one who's always making the great decisions, and Chris Rock, instead of being his usual funny, raunchy self, has been reduced to an unfunny, effeminate stereotype. Kevin James is playing Happy Madison's fat guy joke machine they've used for the past decade or so. David Spade is a ladies' man. Yeah, and Reese Witherspoon is black and Rob Schneider is the punching bag of the group, as everyone likes to either mock him, slap him around, or be the butt of everyone's jokes. In fact, more than half the jokes in this movie are the guys picking on Rob Schneider and playing it as a joke and good fun. But it's so mean-spirited, you might as well just show clips of Biff harassing George McFly. Just say corn. Maze is corn, everybody. Yeah, but he says maze because it sounds more mystical. Maze. 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 Not to mention the actresses who play their wives aren't saved at all, but who am I kidding? No one here is safe. Salma Hayek is playing the usual really hot trophy wife of Sandler who is always out of Sandler's league, but makes him look decent in comparison. Or at least, by God, tries to. Maya Rudolph does a whole lot of nothing, and even when she's playing a pregnant woman, I'm surprised the movie didn't go the cliche route of having her give birth in the end. And pulling that cliche out of the hat is enough to show this movie's progression was left on the drafting table. Maria Bello has probably reached the lowest in her career, as practically every shot of her in this movie is having her breastfeeding or doing whatever lame gag involves getting her chest sucked off. This suddenly makes her being Rachel Weisz's replacement in The Mummy 3 look way more dignified. At least in that movie, she was playing a badass by her own caliber there. But this is just absolutely tasteless, and I am not talking about that breast milk. One of the film's greatest issues, among many, is the script. Now, when you write a script for a comedy, there's typically a balanced three-act structure and some funny tasteful jokes thrown into the mix, but Grown Ups has none of that. For one, the script has no structure, at least for the first and the last 20 minutes of the film, and then everything else just feels like it was written up on sticky notes without thought. Hmm, let's see. What can we do to fill in another hour of the 30 minutes we already wrote to open and close the film? Hmm. 
How about Kevin James fat jokes whilst also getting hurt but not going to the hospital, him dancing with a bucket of chicken on his head, a group of 40 year old men preying on the 20 something year old daughter of Rob Schneider looking like total pedophiles, maybe go out and eat and do absolutely nothing but lame jokes, Salma Hayek wanting to go to her fashion show in Milan and it goes absolutely nowhere, Rob Schneider gets an arrow in the foot whilst also not going to the hospital, Sandler's daughter learns there's no tooth fairy and it doesn't matter at all, the gang goes to the water park and they piss in the pool like children and David Spade has a one night stand with a dog. Perfect. Get this folder of sticky notes to Sony ASAP, or else we'll lose Rob Schneider in the sequel. There's also a running gag here about their children either being misbehaved or abusing today's technology and luxuries, like Sandler's kids being too attached to video games or using high quality products like some rich little snobs. And you know, maybe the movie could have delved into how spending some time outdoors with some friends and family could transition you into being a less needy person, but the movie barely focuses on that change, nor do we ever see it from the kids' perspective. Vas? What? You know, Vas. Or Fiji if you don't have us. Yeah, we have out of the faucet. Like from a hose? Tap water. What country is that from? Wait, these kids don't know what tap water is? What the hell do you wash yourself with, Ambrosia? At times, I don't even know what to say about this movie because it basically offers me nothing. Some people told me they like to watch this movie because it puts their minds at ease, but that's the thing. There's so much of nothing happening that I felt like I was losing brain cells watching this. Would I recommend this film to you? Personally, not at all, because I think it's just kind of a waste of time with a bunch of jokes that either fall flat or don't work at all. Whether it's David Spade falling face first into a pile of shit, Rob Schneider getting the piss slapped out of him, or the fact that I barely classify this as a movie. But if that's something that tickles your fancy, then go ahead and enjoy your little film. And if you haven't seen this movie, proceed with caution, but check it out and see for yourself.